The Tarot Decoded, Raziel's Interpretation, New Extended Edition by Grant Isaac. Chapter 22, Section 9, Sagittarius. Astrological house number 9, Sagittarius who was ruled by the planet Jupiter, the great beneficent, king of the gods, the planet that favours intuition, faith and knowledge that comes from within. In astrology, Jupiter is a planet of plenty. It is tolerant and expansive. The first of the social planets, Jupiter seeks insight through knowledge. Some of the planet's keywords include morality, gratitude, hope, honour and the law. The Jupiter is a planet of broader purpose, reach and possibility. Jupiter has generally been associated with good luck and bounty, optimism and growth, including mental and spiritual, and come under its rule. On the upside, Jupiter is associated with a good sense of humour, goodwill and mercy. The more negative manifestations of Jupiter include blind optimism, excess and overindulgence. Irresponsibility that results from blind optimism, not ill will, can be displayed. True liberation comes from recognising the ego and restricting reactive behaviour. This is a time to slow response time to slow response time and invite the creator into your decisions. Open up to possibilities you hadn't considered. There is always another option for what action to take. Find freedom. Slow down. Practice forgiveness. Know that sensitivity is a gift. Commit to your beliefs. In Kabbalah, Jupiter is associated with the Sephira Chesed, the fourth Sephira on the tree of life. Chesed meaning mercy, loving kindness. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and connects to Chesed in the fourth Sephira, which is why the path to enlightenment layout involves the, all the number four tarot cards and all cards associated with the number four. And they are in order from least to greatest value, four of wands, four of cups, four of swords, four of pentacles, the emperor and death. The path starts from the left and ends on the right the final card being death. How is the death card significant? How is the death card the enlightened one? How is, the, is this full level of potential? I will explain in much detail in this section. Basically, it's, an a, it's a death to the ego self, crossing over into the world of the unknown and leaving the world of what you knew behind. We will begin your journey with the Four of Wands card. Four of Wands depict a couple celebrating their wedding. They are about to walk under the chupa, which is the archway or canopy decorated with grapevines and flowers seen draped along the top of the Four Wands. The chupa represents the house that the married couple will begin their new life in together. This new house is usually a gift from family and loved ones. Wands relate to and represent knowledge, knowledge acquired over time. This symbolically represents the Sagittarius entering the world and beginning their new life already blessed with knowledge. Maybe this knowledge is their DNA code, or perhaps it was obtained in a past life. The Sagas come into the world feeling as if they are an old soul. While they enter the world, they feel as if it is, as if it is their wedding day and that they are lucky and born in a happy situation, for the most part, and feel optimistic and lucky. When they are brought into the world, they are placed on a solid foundation. On day one, they already are well-rounded individuals. This card is bright yellow in the background, symbolising establishment of their bright future. The large castle in the card's background encompasses this notion. The castle is a firm and solid foundation that will last a lifetime. And it's as if the married couple is marrying into royalty. This couple begins with the house, symbolised by the chupa, knowing that they will one day inherit the castle. This is the level of blessed that it is felt here, as well as the level of entitlement. Here we see the negative polarity of this card, as if it refers to the Sagittarius's personality flaws. Receiving blessings without merit does not bring a sense of entitlement where one feels as though they are better than others. 
This creates the notion that they have authority over others, a dominating opinion, and the belief that they have the final say on the matter. Sagittarius can be boastful, overconfident, and brash. You must remember that we are all on different paths. All paths lead to our spiritual enlightenment, but not all paths are the same. Some paths may be easily some paths may seem easy while others appear more challenging. What is important what is important is not to judge and keep focused on yourself. Know thyself. Every person around you is a reflection of your own soul, a projection of your inner state. When you judge others, you are actually only judging yourself. People are God's messengers and they can prove to be our gurus. Every person is an opportunity for you to grow and broaden your sense of self, strengthen your character and become more open-minded with a broader sense of self-awareness. It is important to listen and be open to other people's advice, especially when they speak from their hearts. This concept leads us to the next card. Here we see a stubborn man sitting under a tree of knowledge in the Four of Cups. God's hand is reaching out, trying to offer him loving advice that will improve his life, but only if he is willing to listen. Cups represent emotion and matters of the heart. You will notice that there are three cups in a row at the bottom left of the card, and the fact that these cups are on the left side of the card, and there being exactly three of them, corresponds to the third sephira on the Kabbalah tree of life, Binah, meaning understanding. We see here through symbolism that the man in the card feels as though he has already gained understanding and his level of understanding is placed upon a solid foundation. He has an intellectual approach towards his feelings and can think critically for himself. He is able to resolve one matter from the understanding of another matter. Moreover, the number three relates to balance. For instance, the Holy Trinity is three, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Kabbalah tree of life is a three-column system, which includes the left column for severity and the right column of mercy, and the central column of mildness, which balances the energies of the left and right columns. The tree's three-column system is similar to how a light bulb works. Both of the positive and negative charges are balanced by a middle filament. This three-column system is also present in every atom which has a proton, positive charge, electron, negative charge, and a neutron, no charge. Therefore, this man believes that he is balanced with his emotions. He has emotional control. He is self-motivated, and when he sets his heart out to do something, he sees it through to the end. This man sits under the shade of a large tree. Trees are just like the suit of wands, represent knowledge. The wands in the tarot are directly related to the two trees in the Garden of Eden, the Tree of Life and the Tree of Knowledge. Since the number four cards associated with Jupiter, Jupiter corresponds to knowledge and the tree in this card reflects the energy aspect of the Tree of Knowledge. This man planted this tree for himself and he did so with self-taught knowledge. Sages have a God-given thirst for knowledge, similar to having a God-given talent for painting or playing a musical instrument. Sagittarius yearns to learn and expand their mind. Most importantly, the man in this card had a desire to one day be able to sit and relax under a shade, under a shade tree. So he took it upon himself to learn how to grow a tree. And here we see depicted in the card that he was a success. He did exactly what he planned out to do. Notice a knot in the tree just located above the man's head. The knot looks very similar to an eye. This knot is, represents the all-seeing eye of God. Trees relate to agriculture and the God of agriculture is Saturn. Saturn is the God in the Hebrew Bible, Yahweh. The planet Saturn's south pole is a large oval-shaped storm which looks down upon the earth. This oval-shaped storm is the all-seeing eye of God. God is always looking out for the Sagittarius, and God is always the one guiding them and inspiring them, as well as leading them towards the next step they need to take in order to grow and expand their knowledge, which will prove to grow their prosperity. 
God's hand is depicted here attempting to give this man a cup, which is a symbol for heartfelt advice. The man has his arms crossed as he is stubborn and not wanting to listen. His heart is hardened and he is not open to others' help because he feels as though he has accomplished out to set what he, what he set out to do, to grow his shade tree. The man now feels comfortable and has become complacent. He stopped listening to the voice of God. But God wants you to constantly grow and prosper. Perhaps God is going to tell the man how to plant more trees and spark a desire within him to grow an orchard. The man could grow an entire orchard of apple trees on the hill. He could sell his apples and make a respectable living. All the man needs to do is open up himself and listen to others' advice. The original Hebrew word for the tree is etz, which is almost identical to the word for advice, which is etzah. If we always need to be open-minded and listen to what still small voice, in, listen to that still small voice in our head. For this is the voice of our higher self, the voice of the Creator, God. People are also God's messengers, and what we need to be open to is their advice as well, especially when they speak from their hearts. The shape of a human ear is similar to the shape of half a heart. When you place two ears together, it forms a whole heart. Remember, whatever people offer you, whenever people offer you their help and try to teach you something, remember this when people offer you their help and try to teach you something new. You may think that you already know something because God has already blessed you with the knowledge and the insight that you needed in a previous venture. But now, but know that people are God's messengers and they too will offer up blessings to you with their heartfelt words and acts of charity. You will find that by listening to the still small voice, as well as people's heartfelt words of wisdom, will allow you to become like this tree, allowing you to branch out, grow, deepen your roots and be fruitful. At the same time, you will gain a wider view of all things and obtain mental expansion. Four of Swords the Four of Swords is an extension of the Four of Cups card. It shows the evolved person who took the cup of God's advice and took it to heart and learned from that advice, transforming the wisdom gained into practical know-how. In the Four of Swords, we see a knight resting on his back with the hands over his chest and his palms touching, as if he were praying to a higher power. If you look closely at the stained glass window in the background, there is a woman bowing down before a saint or priest or character. She is asking for a blessing. Just like the woman, this knight is also asking for a blessing. Perhaps he is making a wish. He has realized that he cannot do everything on his own, and he is only successful when he is in communication with and connected to higher power. Something interesting to mention here is that Sagittarius sun signs all have close relationships with their fathers. The father is seen as an authoritative figure and the connection with their father shapes a Sage's character and makes them who they are, more so than with their mother or for any other family member. The Sage's father is usually a man who has a job in some sort of authoritative status, like a lawyer, police officer, church leader, government worker, or unity, university professor. Sagittarius's father is the one who vis wishes to be a guide, life coach, or guru. They teach a Sag about religion and or spiritual life lessons. The father is always the one who offers the help, and ultimately this enables the Sag. The saint or priest character in the same stained glass can easily relate to a father figure who you look up to and ask for help. Coincidentally, Catholic priests are called father. A Sagittarius may only ask for help if they feel that they are worthy of it. More often than not, a Sagittarius will not ask for help. They'd rather put out a vibe in hope that others around them will pick up on it telepathically and come to their need. This idea can be seen as a subtle prayer as opposed to vocalising one's feelings. As in the case of the woman's bowing to the priest in the stained glass window, she is approaching him with her heart on her sleeve. Notice the red heart on her left sleeve. The knight has just proven to be victorious in battle and has proven his worth through charitable acts. 
He now feels as though he is worthy enough to ask for a blessing from God the Father. There are three grey swords hanging on the wall above the knight's head, which represent the three cups from the previous card in their evolved state. The concept here is that the critical thinking has intellectualized the knight's emotions. Now he understands the why and the reasoning at the root cause of his emotions. He has analyzed his emotions and has reached a balance of heart and mind. Swords, swords represent our thoughts and the way we communicate and cups represent our emotions and feelings. So with further analyzation, we could presume that the knight in the Four of Swords took the advice from the previous card, Four of Cups, to heart, and he is now analyzing it, intellectualizing it, and allowing the advice to sink in. He is thinking critically about the new idea and attempts to look at it from all angle, angles. As he develops this big idea, he is able to see the big picture and he can visualize the end result. The end result, the outcome, is his happy thought and it becomes a big wish, his dream, the main reason why he continues to focus on. This wish of his is represented by the golden sword on the side of his bed. This singled out golden sword is his big idea that he obsesses about. He is excited just like a child waiting for Christmas morning to arrive. As the knight lays down to rest, he prays to his higher power, asking the father to grant his wish. Perhaps the still small voice told the man to plant an entire apple tree orchard and you will receive much wealth. The man from the Four of Cups did this and he provided his entire community with apples and cider. Perhaps there were apple trees that supplied firewood for the winter and lumber for building and for tools. This man would have been seen as a hero, a hero or saint and even perhaps awarded the status of knightship. Now, depicted in the Four of Swords, the man is seen as a selfless and charitable person. He is able to rest at ease, knowing he has done well and is a good person. He now feels as though he is allowed to ask for something in return for his good deeds. He has reached a deeper level of his emotional understanding and feels as though he is mentally stronger. By opening up his heart, he has opened his mind and now he will receive prosperity and abundance much easier than before. The knight has gained wisdom in all of this. He now realizes the importance of keeping communication with God. He has come to understand that all of his success in life comes from him listening to that still small voice. When success comes, the ego has a way of making one feel as if they accomplished everything by their own doing. A slight upgrade in social status tends to make a person feel as though they are better than others. The bigger you build yourself up to be, the bigger and more important your opinion becomes. This self-importance tends to make one feel it is their responsibility to take charge, preach, lecture, and take on the burden of having to always be the authority over others. One with such a large ego will feel as though it is their duty to change and to motivate others to become just like them, as though their path is the only right path to take in order to achieve success in life. This is why it is important to know that we are all on different paths, and no matter what path and no path is the only path to take. We all travel alone on our separate paths. Anytime you hear that still small voice, the message was meant for you and you only. Surrender to that voice and allow that energy to guide you. This energy is like the force in the Star Wars movies, and this force communicates with us all in its own way. And we communicate with it in our own way as well. There is no wrong or right way only what is right for us. Helping others is a good thing to do, but allow others to approach you first when asking for help. Leading by example is the best way to change others. You must first work on yourself before you can try to change other people. You must walk the talk, sorry, walk the walk and be the person you wish others to be. Not everyone is open to hearing your advice. Not everyone is at the same mental or spiritual maturity level even to comprehend the words you are saying. 
Everyone is like a vessel and vessels can only hold so much. People's vessels are all different sizes. Some are bigger than others. Some people's vessels cannot hold any more knowledge than what is already there. That is why we must always strive to expand our vessels and keep expanding our minds. Four of Pentacles. Depicted in this card is the same knight from the previous card, but now seen as being further evolved. You will notice that he is now adorning a new crown, representing royalty status. He is now seen in the Four of Pentacles as a successful businessman. He appears to be at peace. He has been granted the wish that he so desired from the Four of Swords card, and he's been blessed with money, power and independence. This man continues to evolve as he progresses along the path of the fours. He has listened to godly advice, he has taken it to heart, willed his mind to think critically, and he has analysed the emotional aspects of it. And now he is putting these new concepts into practical matters. The black cape covering the knight's body represents Saturn's planetary influences. Saturn is the planet of karmic life lessons and restriction. Saturn is the lord of time and creates an illusion which distorts our perception of time, restricting the time we experience because cause between cause and effect. Saturn floods our lives with challenges and frustrations, which are packaged as karmic life lessons. These challenges come to us as blessings in disguise. We do not realize it at the time, but once we make it through one of these life lessons, we feel spiritually stronger and these life situations build upon our character. Pentacles represent practical matters and things that we can touch, such as money, business, career, family, friends, prosperity, as well as health. Pentacles are associated with things that we are able to perceive from our five senses. Pentacles can also relate to one's social status and reputation. It is a very delicate thing the way others perceive us. The evil eye is what some mystics refer to as the judgments we receive from other people. We never really know what will destroy our reputation, therefore we must always be mindful of our words and our behaviours. We must give respect in order to receive respect. Sagittarians are very generous and extravagant when it comes to money. They have an easy come, easy go attitude to their tendency to very and and due to their tendency to be very lucky with money. They are big spenders and have no problem sharing their wealth with other people and charities. They tend to have an optimistic outlook with a pay it forward attitude when it comes to offering friends money. They'll usually spend their money on parties, adventures and helping people out. This concept is depicted here with the knight sitting outside the city wall. He is alone away from everybody else because he creates wealth on his own. He's independent. He follows his passions and transforms his passions into practical streams of income so he doesn't seem like he's working. It's not work when you're doing what you love. The knight has four pentacles located at different areas around his body. Each of these pentacles' specific locations respond with a particular sephira located on the central column of the Kabbalah Tree of Life. For instance, the pentacle located on the top of the knight's crown is associated with the sephira keta, meaning crown. This connection with keta allows the knight to communicate with the higher realms of consciousness where he receives godly insights, divine inspiration and a sixth sense intuition. This knight is very wise and does not hesitate to put his inspiration into action, thus creating prosperity and abundance in his life. The astrological symbol for Sagittarius is the archer. Archers always have a target, whether they receive a clear vision of their target and then quickly form an, formulate an action plan, which they execute with premeditated precision. You will notice that the knight is holding onto a pentacle with his hands. He is grasping this particular pentacle as if it were a steering wheel of a ship. This symbolizes that the knight is in control of his personal life and that he is the one who decides his own fate. The knight is holding this particular pentacle directly over his heart and it is as though he is guard guarding his feelings and protecting his core values. He is solid and avoids succumbing to other people's judgments that may threaten his emotional state in a negative way. 
He holds on tightly to his personal affairs, his personal beliefs and his opinions. He does not seek others' people's approval or their advice. He remains private to the public in order to avoid such judgments. He is an independent thinker. His connection to God, to the higher self, is all he depends on to steer him in the right direction. This is what he knows to be true. This is his core belief that no one can sway. Lastly, there are two pentacles which hold the knight, which the knight holds firmly underneath each of his feet. This represents that he is driven by material matters. Every action he takes as a purpose and leads him closer to achieving his goals. He knows now that in order to obtain prosperity in his life, he must create a way to improve the lives of others. He connects to the higher consciousness of Keta and draws down its creative force, blessing him with inspirational ideas. He applies these ideas in a practical way, offering ways to help improve the day-to-day -day life of others. People pay him for his services and or inventions. Then he uses his wealth to develop bigger and better ideas to help improve the lives of others. The knight gives back to the world which gave so much to him. It creates a circuitry. He, pay, he is paying it forward. This is the secret to prosperity. We receive in order to give, and then paradoxically we receive more because we gave. The more we give, the more we receive. It is a paradox. We give what we don't have in order to receive what we want, just like the knight when he received the epiphany to grow an apple orchard. He was given the idea to sell apples, apple cider and firewood to the townspeople at the bottom of the hill. He took the seeds from the single tree and planted an entire orchard from it upon the hill. Within a year's time, he was able to sell his apples and with the money earned, he was able to venture out and develop bigger money-making ideas that would change the world for the better. In return, he received joy and fulfilment. And most importantly, he earned independence. With his wealth, he gained the freedom to be complete control of his life and decide his own fate and not to answer to anyone. The law of attraction works with gratitude. When you appreciate what you have, you will be blessed with more. The young knight did not realise at first that he was sitting under the shade of a gold mine. Of course, this can work against your favour. When we analyse and point out the bad things or focus on what we lack, then we receive more negativity and lack. Negative thoughts will decay and diminish our material world. Negativity can have an effect on our health, our relationships, and the way we view ourselves. No one can destroy iron, but its own rust can. Likewise, no one can destroy a person, but its his own mindset can. Do not waste one moment in regret, for to think freelingly of the mistakes of the past to reinfect yourself. Neville Goddard, author. And also, we need to realise that our path to transformation is through mistakes. We're meant to make mistakes, recognise them and move on to become, to become unlimited. Jehinder Berg, co-founder of the Kabbalah Centre. When we experience lack, disconnection from the Creator is often the real source of the problem. When we are connected to the light, there is no struggle. Connection helps us develop balance from within which doesn't waver when things shift around us. Always be mindful of your connection with the light of the Creator God, the Higher Self. Remain grateful of your connection and you will never experience feelings of lack. You will remain tapped into the creative force which will guide you to greater successes. Continue to create. If you're not creating, then you're dying. On a further note, Sagittarius is very generous with money, but remember that money does not buy loyalty or trust. Actions speak louder than words. Therefore, people will judge your character by what you do. You cannot buy people's respect or by their friendship. It is earned simply by being, by being there when you need it most. The Emperor The Emperor is the knight who has evolved into someone great. Our knight has levelled up to emperor status. He is now depicted as a powerful leader. 
who has been chosen by his people because of his selfless acts and charitable works. He is now adorning a crown, with jewels, wearing thick armour and sitting in a seat of authority. The Emperor card is associated with the planet Mars, which rules over Aries, a fire sign, just like Sagittarius. The ram is the astrological symbol for Aries, hence the four ram heads located on the Emperor's throne. His throne is coloured grey, and as we know, the colour grey always represents wisdom. The Emperor's wisdom is as solid as a rock. Influenced by Aries energy, the Emperor is fueled with all the confidence and passionate energy needed for him to move mountains. The Emperor holds an Egyptian ankh in his right hand, representing his willpower, which regulates the life force energy associated with desire, drive, ambition and initiative. He is a mentor that continues to help others by passing along his wisdom to the younger generation, sharing practical life advice that will save them time and frustration, and by hopefully awakening within them a lust for life. He teaches the younger generation these things so they will continue on his legacy and build upon and develop the standard of life that he has created for them. He wishes to ignite a desire within them to want to strive for success and to better themselves and for them to share in his vision of what life can be and evolve into. In his left hand, the emperor is holding a golden globe representing the world in its evolved golden age. This evolution into the next golden age is what he strives for. It is his purpose and his life's work. He feels as though he is working for a higher power and it is something greater than himself. He knows that as long as he continues to make the world a better place, he too will be blessed with more prosperity and success. The emperor's crown has five gemstones. There being five like objects corresponds to the fifth Sephira Gavura, which happens to be ruled by Mars, and the energy influence relates to the matters of the ego. The crown corresponds to the Sephira Keta, which corresponds to the higher superconscious, encompassing godly intelligence. The energy influence from Keta is that of pure light, therefore the relation here with the ego can only be a positive one influencing positive ego aspects such as a healthy ambition and drive. The Emperor will receive desire for change, but it will be a desire to change things for the better. He will destroy institutions, dismantle governments, tear down social barriers and get rid of old systems that no longer serve the people. He enables the God of War energy of Ares within him to be a force for good and for positive change. The Emperor wears a red robe over his armour, representing passion, drive and the creative force. He is driven and passionate about leading his people out of complacency. It is not an easy thing to motivate and move people. Most people are reluctant to change. They will fight it and be willing to die for its, their beliefs and way of life. This is why the Emperor is covered in armour. Obviously, the armour suit protects him from physical harm, yet on a spiritual level, the armour protects his emotional self as well. Like the pentacle held over his chest in the previous card, which protected him from other people's words and judgments, he has now upgraded his protective shell and can no longer be swayed by other people's opinions. People will try hard to shut you up and silence you, forbidding you to be heard. They will ridicule you and try to embarrass you, calling your ideas ludicrous. They will try to persuade you to join them, conform and maintain the status quo. But the Emperor stands tall and his core beliefs are grounded on a firm, for, firm foundation. He has a proven system and proven formula and the chosen ignorance of people will not stop him on his crusade to save the world. If you do not stand for something, then you will fall for anything, and he will not be brought down by the ignorance of others. The tall mountains in the background symbolize that the emperor will be able to move mountains and succeed, no matter what obstacles are in his way. Our words have the power to influence others, and they can either build up or destroy our reputation, as well as our relationships with others. Simply put, 
Language holds massive colossal power to manifest change, whether it's good or bad. Sagittarius must remember to be mindful of their words. The emperor practices self-control and learns how to bite his tongue. He uses, uses the healthy ego, also known as life force, within a fuel to drive him towards self-improvement. He believes that we must improve ourselves before we can help others. The emperor transforms his ego nature into a force for good. Self-control is strength. Calmness is mastery. You have to get to a point in your life where your mood doesn't shift based on the insignificant actions of someone else. Don't allow others to control the direction of your life. Don't allow your emotions to overpower your intelligence. Morgan Freeman The Emperor Tarot Card's astrology influences Jupiter conjunct with Mars. Below is a description of this energy aspect as it pertains to Sagittarius as well as its significance to the Emperor card. Mars is the planet of action, individuality, courage, defending, discipline, willpower, ambition, will to act, initiation, expressing anger and black and white thinking. Mars represents secret enemies, fire, violence, competition, as well as accidents. Mars influences decision and fighting ability within us. Jupiter and Mars are good friends in astrology. This is a very good conjunction because Mars is, in, is action and when it comes in with Jupiter, it delivers a boost of energy enhancing a person with spiritual guidance and knowledge. This personality aspect is energetic, resourceful, pioneering and adventurous. Sagittarius is seen here very hopeful, optimistic and lively in their approach to life. They like to know about life's mysteries and have a healthy curiosity for philosophy, religion and spirituality. They act in a very thoughtful way. They are not irrational in their action. It makes them have leadership qualities and fight for the right causes. They are guided by a higher knowledge and guidance. As Jupiter represents a teacher or guru, whenever Sagittarians teach a certain subject to their student, they do it with passion and full of energy. In this conjunction, a person's good actions and good work will lead them to gain wealth, worldly comfort and financial success. The Death Card the final in this reading is the Death Card, which represents the final stage of enlightenment for Sagittarius. This may at first appear odd to have death as a card for enlightenment, but I assure you it is not the case. The first clue to understanding this card is how it is coincides with this layout is by adding up the sum of all the Roman numerals of each of these tarot cards. The five cards leading up to death are all numbered four, which gives us 20. These five cards lead up lead one along a path which evolves their awareness, exalting them to their final stage of enlightenment. And in the death card, which is a Roman numeral 13, so now we have the numbers 20 plus 13 equals 33, which is the highest degree in Freemasonry and the highest level of enlightenment reached in the Hermetic Kabbalah. The number 33 is associated with the Christ and the Christ consciousness. For instance, Jesus was 33 years old when he was crucified on the cross, and that day of his death, Jesus was united with the Father. Jesus became one of, at one with the Father, sharing the same superconscious. Furthermore, there are 32 paths on the tree, Kabbalah, Tree of Life, which lead up to one Jacob's Ladder, along the chakras of their Kundalini. The elevated soul progresses past the 32nd path, or branch, and transcends into the 33rd which is the union with, at oneness with, the divine, the creator, and spirit of all things. This connection to the divine intelligence, the world of causes, is the apex of enlightenment. Another clue is located on the black flag that the death is holding. This flag adorns Tudor Rose, which symbolizes the conclusion of the, world, the War of the Roses. This war was a long and bloody civil war between two feuding royal families who battled over the land and the control over the throne of England after the death of King Henry V. As the war dragged on, the country's people grew tired, famished and famished, 
And then, later on and closer to the end of the war, the people were hit by a plague. The royal families realised the inevitable demise of their country if they were to continue this war, which led them to come to a compromise. The two feuding families decided to join forces equally, which was culminated with the marriage of these two royal families, the Yorks and the Lancasters. This family feud stretched out for 32 years, between the years 1455 and 1487. Here we see again another connection to the number 32, which is associated with the elevated soul's transcendence into the higher realm of Christ consciousness. Kabbalists teach us that Jesus Christ died on the same day he was born, meaning his birthday. Therefore, he was 32 years old prior to the day of his crucifixion, thus transcending to the age of 33 years upon the day of his death. Christ died on the cross on his birthday and then was immediately reunited with the Father. This reuniting with God is associated with being born again. The symbolism is portrayed in this card where we see the death knight returning to the Pope, meaning Father, thus death has reunited with the Father. Worth mentioning here is that not until after the marriage which united the two royal families was the knight family spiritually ready to reunite with the Father, uniting, as, uniting the two as one. The concept of time needed for one bit to become spiritually ready, also spiritually cleansed, is encoded with the number 40. 40 is a very significant Kabbalistic number seen throughout the Torah as well as the Tarot. You will notice that there are four X's on the knight's horse neck strap, which alternate between the four skulls. The skull is an obvious symbol for death, but it can also represent death to things confined within the skull, such as the mind and its beliefs referring to the death of one's fixed mindset and limiting beliefs. The timing and severity of one must endure for spiritual cleansing is relative to each individual. The number 40 is associated with the time period for cleansing because 40 is the Hebrew gematria value for the letter M, meaning water, which encompasses the cleansing power that water provides. The four X's on the horse's neck strap are Roman numerals that represent the value of 10 each, which equals 40 when combined all together. The letter X is also the ancient Hebrew symbol for the letter Tav, which was written as an X. Tav means truth, mark, sign of the cross. So here we see on the horse's neck strap the symbol of the death of death on the cross, alluding to Jesus' Christ's crucifixion. Soon after Jesus' death, the cross became a symbol for Jesus and that has been used by Christians since the second century. Another symbol for Christ is the fish. Consequently, the Hebrew letter assigned to the death card is Nun, Nun meaning fish. The spiritual aspects associated with fish directly related to the spiritual concepts revealed to us metaphorically through the Bible and Torah allegory containing the number 40. It's about the experience of having to endure challenges and overcoming obstacles, facing trials and tribulation, all in order for us to grow spiritually and to become emotionally stronger. The light within our soul desires a return back to the source, just as the source wishes to unite with us. It is our responsibility to cleanse our soul so that we can draw towards we can draw ourselves closer to the source, and we do this by shedding layers of our ego. We must elevate out of our body consciousness or ego if we wish to return to the source. Each challenge and test we face in life are opportunities for us to overcome fear and doubts, thus shedding layers of ego and cleansing the shadow aspects of ourselves. Therefore, every obstacle that presents itself to us is actually a present from God, which is concealed within an illusion of darkness. It is up to us to reveal the light which is the concealed within every trial and challenge we are dealt with. You will soon realize that every challenge you are confronted with turns out to be a blessing in disguise. Our souls are promised that they will one day be able to return to the source and we are all able to feel the source's ever-present gravitational pull tugging at us each moment of our lives as it attempts to draw us in closer. 
The source wants us to maintain a constant connection with its light, which is the source of love and happiness, and to one day return to it and become one with it again. This is God's promise to us, that we will return to him, although it is up to us to earn our way back. This can be done by practices of meditation and by working on ourselves. Jesus Christ's life is an example for us to follow if we wish to unite with the higher self, be one with God the Father, which is obtained only after we experience an ego death, which would lead us to feeling as if we had been born again. This is also an example of the hermetic marriage, which is the idea of one's body consciousness or ego leaving their physical body in order to transcend up the realm of superconsciousness, where it becomes one with the higher self. The hermetic marriage is a coming together of the two polarities, the duality, which is ever present in all creation. Appearing as positive and negative, masculine and feminine. According to the scholar, philosopher and mystic Manly P. Hall, both positive and negative are opposite poles of one circuit. Spirit itself knows no, knows no polarity but manifests through polarity to the accomplishment of the great work. The hermetic marriage is, a sim is symbolic of the individual who has made up himself right with all things and most of all is true to himself and his fellow men. Human relationships lead to divine relationships and the unfolding soul builds ever more noble mansions as vehicles for its expression. Allow me to share some biblical examples of the number 40 as it pertains to the life of Christ. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights in the Judean desert. On the 40th day of Jesus' fast in the desert, the devil shows up to tempt Jesus while he is at his weakest, having fasted 40 days and 40 nights. The temptation of Christ is an allegory for confronting one's ego, referred to by the Kabbalists as the adversary. Forty days was the period from the resurrection of Jesus to the ascension of Jesus. Jesus, just days before his crucifixion, prophesied the total destruction of Jerusalem. Forty years after his crucifixion in 30 AD, the mighty Roman Empire destroyed the city of Jerusalem and burned its beloved temple to the ground. Also worth mentioning is the story of Noah's flood, where the earth endured heavy rainfall for 40 days and 40 nights. As mentioned earlier, 40 is the gematria value of the letter M, meaning water. During the Great Flood, the earth experienced a baptism otherwise known in Hebrew as a mikvah. A mikvah is a Jewish baptism where a person is fully immersed in water. The measurement of water was a minimum of 40 says, approximately 120 gallons, for a mikvah baptismal fount. Another interesting thing to note, as we decode the symbols on the card and reveal deeper meaning, is the hidden symbolism found within the Tudor rose on the death knight's flag. You will notice the rose has 10 petals and five leaves, which give you the number 15. With further examination, you will find out that there are exactly 30, 30 seeds in the center of the rose. This gives us the numbers 30 and 15, which adds together 45. 45 is a significant number found throughout the tarot as well as in planetary magic. For instance, 45 is the sum of all the numbers in the 3 by 3 magic square of Saturn. Throughout the tarot, Saturn's planetary influence is represented by the color black, hence the black Tudor rose flag, and the black armor worn by the Death Knight. Saturn is known to be the planet associated with death and particularly depicted in modern times as the Grim Reaper. Saturn influences past life karmic judgments as well as being the Lord of Time, which are both themes portrayed in the Death Card. Pictured here is Saturn's magic square. It is a three by three squares that has three rows with numbers one to nine. Each row either going down across diagonal equals a constant sum of 15. 
The total sum of all the numbers in the square from 1 to 9 is 45. Concealed within Saturn's magic square is the spirit of Saturn, sigil, also known as the seal of Zazel. Planetary seals are used to seal in the planet's positive traits, while at the same time acts as protection from any of the other planet's negative influence. Saturn is a maleficent planet and, and influences poverty, oppression, karmic baggage, and has a slowing down effect on all things in general. The seal of Zazel acts as a protection from Saturn's maleficent influence, allowing one to draw down desire and prosperity without the restriction of time or any harsh judgments attached. And on a further note, this seal acts as a portal into the astral dimension, which we are able to access through meditation practices and by opening our third eye. By way of meditation, one is able to strengthen the third eye, which is essentially tapping into and connecting with Christ consciousness, and access this portal into the higher dimensions. Obtaining enlightenment, Christ consciousness, is the key that opens the portal door. Interesting to note here that the Sea of Zazel looks similar to a keyhole or an eye. The Hebrew, the Hebrew Gematria value for the name Zazel is 45. And Zazel is known as the spirit of Saturn. Agiel is known as the intelligence of Saturn and is also has a gematria value of 45, which is the value of the Hebrew letter Zadi, meaning fish hook. And a Zadik means meaning righteous one, refers to someone who is a pure channel of light, who remains in constant communication with the source. Moses was considered a Zadik. A Zadik is said to have been in a conscious state of meditation. The Zadik dips his fish hook into the astral waters and receives godly insights and divine inspiration needed for him to manifest prosperity to ultimately enrich his life and the lives of others. Saturn is the darkest of the planets, but it is in the darkest of places that we can reveal the most light. It takes time for one to completely transform their ego nature and reach a Zadik level of spiritual awareness. Although those lucky ones born under the zodiac sign of Sagittarius or Pisces are blessed with the birthright from Jupiter, which grants them a natural gift of the sixth sense consciousness. Worth bringing up again is the Hebrew letter Nun, which is assigned to this card. As mentioned earlier, none means fish, and the spiritual aspects of this letter share much significance with the death card. The fish swims freely in the astral realm, surrendering to the organic flow of nature, which inevitably leads them to enlightenment. The fish drifts through the sea of emotions, feeling, absorbing, observing, and learning. They learn about themselves by observing others. The fish develops empathy for others and then is able to understand how his words and past behaviours affected others. The fish is often depicted as swimming in the sea of emotions throughout the tarot. Each instance corresponds to the emotional aspect of someone who has had to go through a challenging experience that tests the way they react under times of heavy stress. Later in life, these emotional outbursts come back and haunt us. Life has a way of resurfacing these unresolved issues, and once again we are faced with the similar challenge. This is life's way of teaching us karmic lessons. We will continue to be faced with similar challenges until we finally correct our unruly behaviours. These challenges and obstacles are confronted with an opportunities to grow and to build upon our character. By practising empathy and compassion towards others is how we mature and evolve into a Zadik. The empathy gained is the power to opening up your heart, and when your heart is open, you connect to your inner sun or sun. And it is through your sun, S O N, that you connect to the super consciousness of the Father, obtaining Christ consciousness. Jesus said that the only way to the Father was through Him, and Jesus represents the sacred heart. And the Father is the source, the superconscious. In order to open up your heart, you need to first how learn how to forgive others. But most importantly, you must learn how to forgive yourself. 
This is the reason the death knight is approaching the Pope. Death is asking for forgiveness. Do you notice the shape of the Pope's hat and how it resembles the head of a fish? This is the hat worn by the half-man, half-fish god named Dagon. Dagon was one of the 70 sons of the god El, who was associated with being Saturn. 70 is the gematria value for the Hebrew word sod, meaning secret. 70 is also the numerical value of the letter ayin, meaning to see. Now let's take a closer look at the Tudor rose on the death Knight's black flag. Do you notice how the five rose, the rose's five leaves form an inverted pentagram? This is the exact style of pentagram depicted on the devil card, which just so happens to be located directly over the devil's third eye. This pentagram connection that these two cards share links the two cards to the planet Saturn. Both cards share positive and negative aspects of the planet's influence. Furthermore, these cards, pentagrams, which share the same shape and style, are formed within Saturn's magic square. The inverted pentagram represents the drawing down of desire from the astral world and manifesting it in the material world, drawing down the macrocosm into the microcosm and essentially creating something from nothing. This concept is similar to the Kabbalists' idea of drawing down the light into the vessel. We now know that the Hebrew letter assigned to the devil is Ayin, meaning I, and the gematria value of 70. And as mentioned earlier, 70 is the gematria value of the word sod, meaning secret. So now we have here, with all the clues, a much richer understanding of the death card. This knowledge is power, and this knowledge is truth. Likewise, truth is power. We now see within the card's symbols that the Death Knight is asking the Pope for forgiveness in order for the Pope to offer up his blessing, which is to grant the Death Knight the knowledge of the Pope's secret, which is how to access the portal of Zazel. The Pope will show mercy unto the Knight and offer him up his blessing. Therefore, Death Knight will be forgiven for all past transgressions. Death has proven himself worthy and spiritually clean after he has swum in the sea of emotions, where he was first forced to feel, empathise and had to resolve past mistakes. He has taken responsibility for his past behaviours. He has come to the realisation that we are unable to control others and that he realises that this world is chaotic and bad things happen to good people. We cannot control the things that happen to us. The only thing we can control is how we react to the things that happen. The Death Knight receives his blessing of truth, and this new truth will crush his old and limiting beliefs. This new truth will set him free. He has become like the fish, and what happens to you when you try and hold on to control a fish with your grasp? It immediately slips away and out of your hands. The Death Knight will no longer be controlled by his limiting beliefs and a fixed mindset. He will be free, like the fish, and explore and expand his mind and open up his heart to new possibilities. The Pope grants him passage through the two pillars located in the card's background. The knight crosses over into the world of the unknown, leaving the past he once knew behind him. He continues along the path facing the rising sun, which marks the dawning of a new day. The knight returning to the sun is symbolic of Christ returning to the Father, the source, where he reunites with the highest level of enlightenment. This is symbolic of the knight dying as the morning sun rises and diminishing the darkness. The knight will begin a new adventure into new and unknown territory as a reborn soul. As you focus on unconditional love for all people around you, the dark forces within are cast out. And as you meditate on these cards, think to yourself in the past, have I felt hatred for certain people? Now, as I picture those people in my mind, I feel only love. Light washes over them and me, and I recognize the common thread that we share, the spark of the creator. My heart opens as I wish them joy and fulfillment, peace and greater understanding. That concludes... Chapter 22, Section 9, Scorpio, the Tarot, uh, sorry, Sagittarius, 
The Tarot Decoded, Raziel's Interpretation, New Extended Edition by Grant Isaac. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, the one that says all, so you won't miss the next uploaded chapter of this series as well as other videos. If you'd like a personal tarot reading with me, please visit my website, newangeltarot.com. And if you'd like to learn more about tarot, you can also visit me at my website, newangeltarot.com forward slash academy. Until next time, thanks for listening.